Good morning. My name is Jennifer Perry and welcome back to my scrap room. You normally see my hands, but today I thought I would start out this way. I'm going to go ahead and film my scrap room tour. My room is not complete yet, but I think you will be able to get the gist of what we are planning to do or what we need to finish with what I show you. It's it's probably 90% finished. I'm not going to be showing you the closet because it still has my daughter's items in it. She needs to come over and move those out so that I can take over the closet and we can build the closet out and the paper storage is not complete yet, but you'll understand what we want to do by looking at it. Um, I can't wait any longer. I need to show you this scrap room. I'm so happy with it. So without any further waiting or as other YouTubers say, without any further ado, let's go. Okay, so I have pulled the chairs out of the room so that we don't trip over them. But let's get started. This is as you're walking in the room. I'm going to try and go slow so that I don't make anybody dizzy. But I have a magazine rack right here that I keep all of my larger items in. My stamp platforms, my trimmers, the white little tubs that are standing straight up. Those are appetizer trays that I use to kind of corral little bitty things when I'm working. And then my table, pardon the light, I'm trying to do this on a cloudy day so it wouldn't be quite so bright. My table is nine foot by nine foot, I believe. And my husband built it. So this, <laughs> I'm about to fall over. This end of the table is more of the business end of the table. So I have my printer. And then this unit right here is more office-y stuff. So that's on that end of the table. This area is where my husband normally will pull his desk up, or his chair, I'm sorry. And he built in a little tray for him to put his keyboard. He normally works next to me in the evenings. This little shelf ended up being wider than I expected, but it works. I like it. Then we have my little area where I do my editing and office -y home stuff. Everybody needs a little computer station. Okay, so I'm trying to get it to the weather window is not quite so bright for you guys. So this is the area that I will normally sit when I'm working. If you notice, the table is shiny, silver shiny. That is sheet metal. But on this side, I have just a piece of shelf liner to kind of help with the glare when I'm filming and it just you know comes up when it's dirty I put a brand new piece down biscuits is holding it down at the moment looking out the window for his birds and then this little unit is all of my most used little scrappy items that I need the cats to not get into so I've got my my vase full of adhesive my little turntable here my husband has mounted a power strip for me that I use quite a bit. My heat gun is readily available. And then under here, I would have preferred this top to be white, but they are completely out of it, and it would have been March before they could order another one. And I went, you know what? Brown's good. We're okay with brown. So I keep my trimmer here. I keep a pack of baby wipes. This top drawer is scrap pattern paper. This is my stuff that I reach for the most while I'm scrapbooking, so my stitching, adhesive, foam tapes, my inks, various pens and scissors, all kinds of little doodads that I need to be using up, my desk templates, and my bitty sparkles. I'm going to frame this as soon as I find a frame that I want. And then these next two drawers is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, but I didn't realize I wanted to do it. Does that make sense? This is my most used punches, and I hide my headbands in here, because if not, the cats take off with them. So this is my most used punches in this drawer right here. And then this drawer here is my not used very often punches, but the ones that I still would like to keep. I've already purged all of my punches, and these are the ones that I still use, just not quite as often. Okay, we're going to start at the bottom of the bookshelf, because I'm already sitting. So I have my embellishments 
in these two little bins right here and I keep them in these bins so that when I go to retreats they're ready to go. These are my stitching tubs so when I need to stitch I've got all my threads right there. My ink blending foam thingies that go on the end of my Ranger. I've got one for the Ranger inks and one for close to my heart inks and then all of my wood veneer. The two big binders are close to my heart, the larger stamps, and a Studio AE, which is Allie Edwards, when she had a very nice stamp line out, geez, 10 years ago or so. This here is all of my little reference books that I get a hold of quite a bit. This is my spray inks. <laughs> it squeaks, but that's okay. And then my shimmer brushes, my watercolor pencils my markers and other type of pencils and then oops sorry you can't see my markers and then this is you know screwdrivers and little things that I need to have around that I don't want to lose and then you have to have a chocolate supply so I have my chocolate supply up here is my brushes a little jar of clean water for one of our watercolor and then spray adhesives watercolor gelatos another thing of baby wipes These are these are the whiteout for my planners that match the planner paper. Some itty bitty punches that I use, and then my foil quill, and then that bag of flowers that I'm trying to use up, and then just some other books, some mini albums, my love of color, how-to books from close to my heart. This is oh, there's not one that's really available. Let me see if I can just pull it out. This is little envelope, clear envelopes for my handmade green cards. And then this here is where all of my re-inkers are. And at the very top is my thickers and some chipboard. Is some projects that I still need to get to. Some photos that I know that I've already scrapped, but I cannot part with them. I don't know why. About 10 brand new albums that have not been used yet some finished albums and then at the very end is some photo albums that eventually I will tear apart. The second shelf is albums that I'm still working on and a project for my mother-in-law that I'm working on and then we'll come over this way. And this is planner supplies and diamond painting supplies. These are stamps. They're my stamp notebooks and what I have done is I went through all of my stamps and I only kept the images that I love and I put them in notebooks by category and these are the ones that I know I'm going to keep I'm never getting rid of them so I wanted to put them into notebooks I have my Cricut I have my brother's scan and cut this is all of my handmade cards this is my six by six paper pads I do not have very many that's all I have and then these are my newer stamps that I've bought since I did the binders I'm using them, but I'm not to the point where I need to purge yet. When I purge, I will make new binders. But these are the ones that I'm still using that are newer. And then these are my thin cuts that have my stamps that have thin cuts with them or dies. And then these itty bitty close to my heart stamps that you just cannot, I can't store them properly. So, and then this is my junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer. I haven't quite figured out what to do with that drawer yet. And then the bottom is empty. Let's come over this way. We haven't, we're not going to get into the closet yet because it still has my daughter's stuff in it. She needs to come over and clean that out so I can put the rest of my scrapbooking supplies in it. Okay, so here we go. That's the project that I'm working on for my mother-in-law. This is my sidekick, my washi tape. Lava lamp, stinkum, my little uh, scentsy candle. And then this is my die cutting station. So I have my electric big shot, my cuddle bug. And yes, I really do use my sidekick, my cuddle bug, and my electric big shot. This is a caddy of things for whichever machine I'm going to be using. This is the supplies that go with it. And then these are my thin cuts or die cuts, depending on what company they are. And they are in envelopes made by Stampin' Storage. 
And the bin is just a fridge bin that I picked up on Amazon. So, there we go there. And then this back here is some alphabet from Close to My Heart that won't fit in these. But I travel with them, so I put them in a zippy. This corner is, this is some candle wax that go in my Scentsy lotion. Some hand sanitizer to clean off my glass mats. My label maker, ink that goes with my label maker, and my printer. And then this is a sharps container that diabetics would use for their needles. I picked one up at the pharmacy. I keep my used blades. So exacto knife blades, cricket blades, anything that might be sharp in the trash can. It is going to take me years or needles, like when I sew um, dull needles. So that's going to take me years to fill up. I don't have to worry about the cats getting into it. And when I dispose of it, I don't have to worry about poking anybody. This is a little unit that was um, gifted to me, kind of second handy. So the top is all my splat mats. This is release paper, parchment paper, foil. This is adhesive cleaner, a larger double-sided sticky tape, and then stamp cleaner in the back, solvents, that type of thing, gamzole. And then these are foam that I use when I'm diamond painting to protect the edges of the painting. My various cutting mats that I use, a frame for a project that I'm currently working on, a little, I call that my little dirty clothes basket of the little rags that I use when I'm working. When it gets full, I clean it or put them in the washing machine. I have my little refrigerator and it is stocked because everybody always asks what's in it. It's stocked with Dr. Pepper and water and ginger ale and some sparkly water. And there is some itty bitty bottles of wine back there that's single use. And then this is, I picked this unit up at Michael's. It was empty. It did not come with the containers. But what I do is when I'm ready to scrap, when I have all my memorabilia and I have all of my pictures printed, I put them in these containers so that if I have a retreat, a crop, or I'm generally working, I can just pull this container out and it has everything I need to scrapbook that subject. This is the newest little drawer unit that my husband bought me. It is adhesives. He bought me this for Christmas last year. I used to teach so I have a whole bunch of these extra adhesives here. It's kind of just holds a little bit of everything. My glue gun. And then this down here is my paints. And then we're going to swing around. And then this is my ink station and where I keep all of my memorabilia. So I have my, well first off, this is a deviled egg tray. I use it as a paint palette because it's easily cleanable. And then this is all my shimmer trims from close to my heart and all of my distress inks from Ranger. We just painted these, so these um, cubbies are a little stiff at the moment. They'll, they will, they'll loosen up as soon as I use them a little more often. And then my credenza top. And then over here is my close to my heart inks. This is the old style of inks that I am still using, and this is the new style of inks. And I've had these racks for years and years and years. There was a consultant sister of mine that her husband made them to fit the close to my heart inks and we recently just painted them white and then this is my new little credenza and what I have is before I had one of these and each drawer was a year and then for that year anything you collect would go in that drawer so 2017 anything concerning 2017 would go in that drawer. Well, now that my child is grown, I don't need such big drawers. Don't mind the straws. I'm hiding those from the cat. But anything to do with 2017 goes in 2017. 
2018 I've already got pulled out because it's completely ready to go. So everything for 2019 in there. Everything that I'm collecting for 2020 in there. And so on. And then this is gear that I may use when I'm traveling or other miscellaneous items that I dig into quite a bit. This is my mixed media drawer. And these two are for diamond painting. So this is all the diamond painting stuff that I use. And then this here is diamond painting kits that are ready to go. And then this is my planner supplies. And this is a project that I am collecting photos for a family heritage product. Product. Project. <laughs> So I'm not ready to start working on that, but I still need to keep it safe. Up top, this is, I'm using this as a drying rack whenever I get finished with layouts. You know, you, if you're using wet adhesive or you've mixed media, whatever, these are my little drying racks. That is my tool caddy that stays ready to go for each and every little retreat and crop that I go to. This is a little letter sorter that I'm keeping my various sized flip flaps in. Kleenexes, because everybody needs Kleenexes. This is for diamond painting. It's all the little tools, tips, wax, trays, that type of thing. And then this is for scrapbooking. So adhesive wipes, alcohol prep, a little miscellaneous drawer, blades, and business cards. This is all of my page protectors, my pokey pads, watercolor paper, and then true fit folios. Uh, pocket pages, flip flaps, glitter paper, black cardstock, white cardstock, French vanilla cardstock, and then this is little bits of embellishments that I can't part with just yet. All of my Nina white cardstock, and then these two are for paper storage. They are the um, envelopes that I'll show you in just a moment, and then all of this is stencils and mixed media stuff. And then my favorite, my favorite part of the room at this moment, because it's going to lend me so much storage when my husband is finished with this, is my island. So it is two Calyx units back to back. These little legs are little furniture legs that we got from Ikea. And then this is just a regular desktop from Ikea. And then we just kind of all stacked it together. My husband is going to be building, he hasn't finished it yet, let me get on the floor. These are little racks that he's going to be building with paper. It's got little dividers in it, so my paper stands straight up. This one is the prototype. He isn't quite finished with it yet. We're working on it, which is why there is just this one. This entire side is going to have the rack in it, and it's going to be pattern paper. So the, the top four is going to have the racks in it, and it is going to be paper. Stitching, stickers, equipment, like camera equipment, tripods, that type of thing. That's empty for the cats. They like to open it up and jump in there for themselves. So I'm going to leave that one empty for the cats. And then underneath is... I have all of my Cricut mats, baby wipes, because those need to be handy. That's the diamond painting that I'm currently working on. And then this side, the entire side, is going to be cardstock. And again, he's going to build in the racks so that all of my cardstock can be displayed on this side. But at the moment, my two cardstocks are right there. These are collection, paper collections and a heater because it's cold in here sometimes. And then on top, I have my glass mat. I have catalogs from from Stampin' Up! and close to my heart that stay on my counter so I don't lose them. I, I have a friend coming over to play so I have a snack bucket. This is the patterns that I'm going to be using today and then a big bowl of clear blocks for stamping, inking, whatever. This is an old-fashioned cheese bowl that I've had in my house for a very long time and it holds my blocks perfectly. And then of course spray bottle for the cats. So let me just give a quick overview because I know 
it can be disconcerting to walk around a room but not see it. So we're just going to do a quick overview. Sorry about the window. I'm trying to pick a time that it wasn't going to be quite so bright. And then let me go to the other side of the room. Okay, so this is the other side of the room so I can get this wall over here for you. So I'm basically catty corner. I was standing in the doorway before. Now I'm standing directly across from it. Oh, I didn't tell you. Okay, this wall here is brand new, like as of a day and a half ago. These are two diamond paintings that I did specifically for this room. And then this painting here my daughter did for me for my birthday. Here's the painting that she did for me for my birthday. It fits the room perfectly. And then two diamond paintings. So this, like I said, this shelf here is a little bit wider than I was expecting it to be. It's going to work out just fine. This shelf here is actually a shoe rack. I wasn't sure if I wanted that to stay there, but I like the extra storage it gives in that corner. So I'm going to leave it. It's, I was going to buy another one of these shelves and just kind of make it do an L shape, but I kind of like the shoe rack. It kind of gives extra storage and keeps everything away from the cats. And then of course cat bed number one, cat bed number two, cat bed number three, and I only have two cats. So I think this is a pretty good place to stop. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. The only furniture that was purchased was this unit here to replace the unit that I gave to my daughter. She wanted the original unit that was Target and I wanted everything to be Ikea. So this unit and these two units are the only ones that were purchased. And the reason I went with Ikea over the other storage units was they would fit my paper and what I wanted to do with my paper. And I decided to go ahead and make all the units the same so that I could move things around as needed and all of the dimensions were going to be the same. So all of my Ikea units are the same units they're all movable, they're all interchangeable, and my desk is even movable. If you notice, it is in three pieces so that I can reconfigure the room anytime I need to, or I can easily move the desk anytime I need to. And then my Alpha system, I've had this system since my very first scrapping foyer. This was the first major purchase that we made for my scrapbooking ever. This, these units cost $700. 15, 16, 17 years ago. When we move them from the old room, they're on tracks. So when we moved them from the old room, the only part that we replaced was the screws. And we honestly didn't even have to do that, but we did it because they had been holding weight for, for many years, and we figured we'd give it some fresh screws. But I will tell you, this unit was expensive. But after pulling it all down and seeing that there is no warping, no <laughs> misshapen um, metal, no stretched out metal, the screws were not even stretched out. I mean, this sucker has not moved. That was money well spent years ago. And like, you know, this stuff is all interchangeable and reconfigurable. Oh, the, t the very top is all of my husband's chessboards. We like to have those there. And we made that shelf higher so the cats can't jump up there because they're eyeballing it quite interested. You know, they're very interested. So my husband built the desk and he built the island for me. And the shelf came from my friend Amy. I, you know, she was getting rid of it and I wanted it. So I said, okay, that's mine. And that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Until then, see you next time. Bye.